Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Painless Universal Conversation with myself, Anne Walsh. Today's conversation is really looking at your gut and immunity. Have you ever thought about, is it just the food you eat or has it got other things to do with what we do? Is there a comprehensive care that we should be thinking about? Where my guest today, Dr. Jenna Makachi, will be talking about this. She'll be telling us about the wider issue that affects our immunity. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about her. Dr. Jenna is an immunologist who specializes in understanding how nutrition and lifestyle interacts with the immune, immune system for health and disease. She understands how nutrition and lifestyle interacts with the immune system and why it is so important in everything we do. She's a graduate from the University of Glasgow, PhD holder, Imperial College London. She talks all things allergy, chronic inflammatory, and how to resolve your issues. She's awarded the prestigious Presidential Fellowship. She's an author, speaker, and an educator. She's also a personal trainer born out of our own desire to help women to feel and find a better way to stay in shape, not just thinking you have to be at the gym. She's on a mission to break down the science behind our health and share secrets on how we do well for good. She's a lecturer, a qualified fitness instructor, I'm really delighted to have her here with us to tell her story. What led her on this path? What can we be eating to feel better? Most importantly, we all know inflation is, around, is, is happening around the world. How can we eat still nutritious food on a diet? We'll be asking her a vital question about lots of people being influenced that in trying to influence us with what we should be doing to boost our immunity. How do we tell the difference? Who is really real? How do we spot them out and tell the fake? Meet my amazing guest, Dr. Jenna Makachi, as she shares her story. Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself, Anne Welsh. Have you ever thought about your gut? I mean, it's a question that's always on our mind, your immunity. How do I stay better? How do I get myself, you know, what food should I eat? Is it all just about the food you eat? Is it about the exercise you do? What is it? Our guest today will be telling you all about this. We'll be asking her the very difficult question, what really is immunity? Are we, what do we need to do to protect ourselves? Dr. Jenna, Makochi. We'll be asking, answering all of your questions. You know, some of you have sent me questions already because I've told you about this conversation coming up. But before we get started, I've done the introduction, but in case you missed that bit, she's an immunologist who specializes in understanding how nutrition and lifestyle, listen to this, nutrition and lifestyle interacts with the immune system for the health and disease. Dr. Jenny, how, Jenna, how are you? Oh, I'm good, thanks. Thank you, Anne, for having me on. I'm excited for our conversation today. I am truly, truly excited because, you know, I was just reading through your bio and I thought, wow, you are not just a doctor, you know, you're a professor, you lecture at university, you are a fitness trainer, <laughs> you are a mother with twins, and I mean, how fabulous is that, being a mother, so you actually also, when you talk, you also understand what you're talking about in terms of the kids as well, what kids mm -hmm. are doing to also protect the immunity, which is something I'll be getting into. Before mm -hmm. we get started, who are you? Yeah, somebody said to me yesterday, I think, uh, what is my job? And I was like, oh, gosh, which which one do I pick? I suddenly found myself in <laughs> this situation where I don't have a single job. But I think that, um, yeah, I'm a person with a lot of compassion for people who struggle with their health and the confusing landscape of health information that we have. Um, and I feel that given my background, 
um, and my training, I have a lot to offer to hopefully set people's mind at ease um, to try and communicate these complex things about our body in a way that's really uh, accessible, but also quite gentle and encouraging, you know, it doesn't make it sound really scary. So yeah, a lot of different things, but primarily a mother. <laughs> I love the way you said, don't you don't make it sound scary, because I think that's the thing we always affiliated with anything medical, even some of the words, sometimes, sometimes we can't even pronounce it because they're just so complicated yeah I'm glad you just said that not to make it sound scary something <laughs> that's realistic that everybody the majority of the population will understand yeah. you know when you look at your background what led you on this path to go into this medical field eating healthy thinking about our God what led you on this field well, I think from a very young age, I remember being very fascinated by the human body and health and disease and why people got unwell and trying to understand that question, like what, what made um, seemingly healthy pe people end up getting sick. I was very influenced by my mother. I grew up on a farm and she was um, uh, worked in catering. So she was very much like, you know, health was built at the table. If that's, you know, not just what you're eating, but those conversations around the table and she would always have people over and she loved cooking for people. And so that was a kind of big inspiration. And then I fell into this field of immunology, which is the study of the immune system. And it just kind of made sense to me that the immune system is really this wellness system. It seems to be involved in every aspect of our health and well-being, physical health, mental health. Um, and it kind of just followed my uh, interest and it's taken me on this kind of weird and wonderful winding path. But um, I think at a certain point, probably in my 20s, living in London, and burning the candle at both ends I started thinking well I know all this stuff about the immune system but I'm not really applying it to my own life and that was where I kind of had that epiphany that knowledge is one thing but the application of that knowledge in an environment that can be very challenging to our health is, is a whole, to, totally different thing and I think that's when I started wanting to communicate more about the immune system but in a way that made it accessible to everyone and also in a way that was understanding of how hard it is we all kind of know that we should eat well and what we should be doing but there's so many barriers to that and that, I mean those can be you know the big things like structural socioeconomic barriers but also just the daily grind you know as a working mom I find it sometimes quite hard to keep the motivation to maybe eat healthy because at the end of the day you know life sort of wears you down and I just wanted to be very uh compassionate to people and instead of pontificating just be like you like we're it's a common humanity we're all struggling with these things but we can have those little things that we can do in our daily life to to make it that much easier but you know, i love what you you know you just mentioned about being kind in terms of the um what we eat because one of the key factors why people can't do a certain things or look after their health is the price of food for example yeah. now inflation has gone up um the rainbow diet and and which a lot of people are talking about it yes. sounds wonderful but when you go to the till to pay for that rainbow diet yeah. it will only last you three days it probably won't even last past setting you know setting out so this is something you know later in the question that we'll be asking you about how mm -hmm. could families eat well protect their gut on a budget because it's something yeah. that a lot of family are confused about but i have to go back to the original question what is the immune system because i know I, I hear it i see it i you know people talk about it all, everywhere but what really is it yeah i mean it's a it's quite a difficult thing to describe because we we see it as if it's one thing but it's not it's many different things it's and it's all over our body so it includes things like the white blood cells that are moving around our blood right now but those white blood cells are also found in our tissues um, and it also includes things like our skin, the lining of our airways and our digestive tract. So anywhere that there's, there's a barrier to the outside world where there could be a chance of, of germs getting into our body and causing an infection. Um, and it's also things like the, the bone marrow where these white blood cells are made, uh, lymph nodes which are dotted around the body where the, these are little hubs of immune system activity. 
Um, and then things like the gut, as you mentioned, this is a big part of our immune system. Um, about 70% of our immune system is located along the digestive tract. And it's constantly um, communicating with the communities of microbes that occupy inside our gut. And we now recognize that these are a really important part of calibrating how well our immune system is going to work to protect us. Oh, that's really interesting. And the gut and the immunity, um, that's a big focus for you because that's, uh, that's your specialty area. Why did you decide to specialize on that side of things? Yeah, I was. I, I moved to Switzerland at a certain point in my career, and I was working on the role of dietary fiber in how it um, calibrates our immune system through the gut. So fiber is the kind of um, rough parts of the plant that's just found in all plant foods, fruits and vegetables, beans, pulses, legumes. Um, and I found this really fascinating. And I think often with our immune system, we're quick to think about vitamin C or zinc or taking a, a, a supplement, but actually the fiber in our diet is this kind of unsung hero of protecting our immune system. Them. And so that really kind of, for me, was a, a big moment. And I've, it, we've seen the science just grow and grow ever since. It's really, I think, an area that will keep evolving as we understand more. So when you talk about nutrition and lifestyle, that's a, a key topic today is that nutrition and lifestyle. How do they interact with our immune system? How can you describe that? Yeah, I'm I mean, I, I guess I started off looking at nutrition, but then I realized, you know, you can have the perfect diet, but you can be really unhappy. You can be maybe uh, having a sedentary lifestyle, not moving around enough um, or living in an environment that was very bad for your health. And so it kind of felt like, actually, it doesn't start and end with food. It's you've got to take in this broader lens. Um, and I think that's where people sometimes get a bit um, tripped up because they're putting all the effort into having the perfect plate uh, and the most healthy diet but the stress of achieving that is actually going to have a negative effect on the immune system and so if you consider the immune system like this sort of sensing system it's looking for lots of different inputs and um, so that's not only the right fuel from food the right vitamins and minerals the amount of dietary fiber and protein and fats but it's also uh, really connected to your nervous system so it's it's important to recognize that your thoughts and feelings and emotions are almost imprinted onto those immune cells because they have receptors for all these neurotransmitters, you know, like serotonin and dopamine that, that communicate how we're feeling. So we know that people who are, um, you know, have a low mood or they're lonely, this can have a suppressive effect on our immune system. So we really have to think broadly when we're looking at what, what can shape how well our immune system works. So I guess I started looking at food and then realized, actually, it doesn't stop there. We really need to look at the, the big picture. And parents, how can parents protect, protect themselves? Because the, the thing is that, you know, there's a broader picture, which is something I really love that people are now looking at that comprehensive rather than just focusing on just one piece of the thing, which might just be dark or something which you've all thought about. But there's also a comprehensive thing where you, we talk, I, I, you know, I tend to forget that bit. I just always think, oh, it's just a diet, eat, well, eat healthy, other things don't really matter. Now, I'm, I'm glad you said that is that comprehensive care, that comprehensive, looking at the bigger view, where are you living? Are you actually moving your body? Are you eating the right, are you drinking as well? So in terms of parents, when parents listen to this, and the, the, a lot of parents are now becoming more worried about their kids' immunity, what can they do to boost this up, especially with um, the uh, post-pandemic um, kids, a lot of kids, their immune, immune system, I think immunity went down, and how can they, you know, really work with their kids to get them back again, get the energy up, get them excited about eating the right food as well. Yeah, I mean, this is a big topic. It's no easy feat. So <laughs> I'll say that first of all. Um, I would say that it's quite normal for kids to pick up minor infections because, you know, 
I've got two kids of my own. The, the personal hygiene's a work in progress. You've got to nudge them to wash their hands. You know, they're up in each other's uh, space. So there's an opportunity for germs to spread very easily at nurseries, daycares, school. So kids do tend to pick up more minor infections than adults. So that's um, just quite normal to set everyone's mind at ease. Um, and I think that we can start with a real gentle nutrition with children. Um, I get a lot of parents asking me, well, how can I get them to eat all these um, fantastic foods that we know uh, and we can get into, like the rainbow diet that are going to furnish their immune cells with all that they need to work well. And I think the first thing is to remember that it's about the overall pattern of food that's eaten across the weeks and months. So don't worry about every meal being perfect. When we look at the scientific studies, more and more it's it's clear that it's less about focusing on you know five superfoods and it's more about that overall pattern. So things like the Mediterranean diet, which is one um, sort of these anti-inflammatory colorful diets that's well studied, but when we drill down, it's really any minimally processed diet. And when I say minimally processed, I'm referring to um, uh, the low levels of these ultra processed foods. So that really is um, the things that you might not be able to create in your own kitchen because they contain all these kind of industrialized uh, components and ingredients so you know if you you look in the ingredients list on a product and it contains things that you don't recognize and you wouldn't use if you were cooking that at home that's a good sign that it's highly processed and we should be avoiding that now when it comes to children it's really hard because the big food companies are heavily marketing these foods to kids. They put fun characters on the front, they make them colorful, they'll use words on the front that say it's organic or it contains you know, certain nutrients and it can almost mislead parents to thinking that you know, this is healthy when really it's the home cooked meals that are going to be much better, making sure there's enough sources of protein. So that could be meat or fish, but it also could be plant sources of protein, beans and pulses, legumes, um, tofu, things like that. And then a diversity of different plants, different fruits and vegetables. And I just say to my kids, you know, sometimes you don't want to eat the vegetables but everybody just has to have a go and try it might not be our favorite meal tonight but maybe tomorrow will be your favorite meal and we've just got to have a, a have a try and you know we've got to be bold step outside our comfort zone try new foods every now and again and I'll bring out you know this vegetable that they used to reject and say like tonight's the day where we're going to try this and I think that really putting a positive spin on it and and encouraging them and sort of almost rewarding them for being adventurous has really worked well um, and also you know if your child says I don't like tomatoes I, I would still put tomatoes on their plate every meal they don't have to eat it but it's there um, and almost making that plate look normal with the inclusion of vegetables or or fruits so that you know that's imprinted into their mind you know that idea that it's normal to in your plate with your meal include some kind of um, vegetables or you know healthy foods and a combination of the foods they love maybe it's the chicken nuggets or the chips but also with the things that are their less favorite things and then just encouraging them to try it I try and get my kids involved in the cooking process as well growing if you can if you have a small garden then they kind of get to see where their food's coming from they're almost a little bit more interested when they get their hands on you know the fresh produce coming out the ground and then watching the process to that being created into something that will be served to the family uh, yeah I, I i love the growing watching the food where they come from because i think that just gives you that fascination that yeah gosh, if this is where this has come from i i'm so fascinated i need to take care of it i need to eat it because it's going mm -hmm. to look after myself you know with everything and our when we started the conversation one of the things i said to you was the inflation going up in there you know not just the uk around the world and people still need to eat healthier but then when, when we look at the healthy option it tends to be the more pricey options yeah what advice do you give to people in terms of balancing it out to still manage to eat a healthy but at a reduced budget i know this is probably 
Yeah. Um, out of and the, out of your um, I don't know your doctor, but I'm sure this is something you see yourself. Oh. How do you deal with it yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think I think about this all the time, and it's something that really frustrates me because it feels like um, it's such a huge problem within society that is so hard to crack. Um, I think I would just remind, get people to realize that the big food companies that are selling the really cheap, you know, bulk foods are not public health companies. They don't have your health in mind. And you need to kind of almost find a tipping point whereby you're going to buy some fresh produce, um, but the ones that maybe have the longest shelf life, um, the ones that you can you know confidently cook because I do think that some people may not have been given um, cookery skills like the basic basics of being in in the kitchen and comfortable to make a dish from the raw ingredients Um, so go with things that you're comfortable with um, and combinations of fresh with tinned um, foods frozen foods I think is a really good way. Uh, Obviously food waste is a big issue. And if your child is rejecting a meal, um, I get quite uh, good at finding like different ways to use the food that the kids might not have eaten. So maybe, I don't know, redoing it inside another dish or something, adding it to a sauce or, you know, if it's vegetables, you can uh, blend them up into something else. Just these little ways that you can make things go far. Um, But yeah, I mean, I rely heavily on frozen and and tinned foods because it's, um, you know, when I get in from work at night, it's almost quicker than spending that time chopping everything up and you can just quickly throw things together but I think it's you know just be kind to yourself because it isn't easy it's the food environment in which we live this Mm -hmm. is a known contributor to a lot of the conditions of poor health that um, we're dealing with and the rising things like um, obesity and childhood obesity you know it is because of the dramatic change in the last few decades of the food environment we're constantly told we need to be snacking and eating there's constant availability of cheap um, unhealthy food all the time and you know motivation to eat healthy gets worn down when you're constantly bombarded with adverts of you know really tasty food it's hard to resist so it's about finding the balance I think In general, what food would you really classify that would really help keep our immune system healthy? What would you, what are the things you tend to point towards that people should tend to eat it as much as possible? Yeah, I think we want to have maybe a portion of green vegetables a day at a minimum. So things like broccoli or the more leafy greens like spinach. Um, we want to be having a source of protein with every meal. So whether that's eggs or dairy or meat, tofu, fish, um, or uh, different beans and pulses that are bringing that protein. Those are the building blocks that our immune system can use to make things like antibodies um, that are going to protect us. Um, healthy fats. So things like olive oil for cooking, uh, avocados, um, and then just trying to build in as many fruits and vegetables as possible. Um, Some foods are gonna be higher in certain nutrients, but it's really about that overall pattern rather than focusing on um, a handful of specific foods. Uh, And I think that hopefully gives people the um, ability to sort of tailor to their own food preferences um, and perhaps um, uh, not feel like they have to be boxed into certain a certain way of eating but they can maybe tailor to their cultural preference um that kind of thing you're a fitness trainer you start you 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 help other women um you know get into their best shape of life and you've always emphasized one of the, all your key things i listen to your conversation is that you focus that it's not just about diets it's not about just about what we eat you focus on what we um the and how exercise fitness impacts us can you just tell us a little bit about why you went into the fitness circle how to become a uh, personal trainer what you do and how does uh, keeping fit impact our immunity yeah that's a great question so strangely enough I I was living in Switzerland I had just had given birth to my twins and I felt completely 
knocked sideways. I just completely didn't know who I was. I was thrown into this world of being a mom. I was also living in a foreign country. Um, and I, I did speak the language somewhat, but you know, with baby brain and everything, everything felt really difficult. And my twins were premature. So they spent five weeks in hospital. So I didn't get that normal start. I think often when you're pregnant, you look forward to meeting your baby, going home, and it's this lovely, uh, you know, a, a week in bed, a week on the sofa, that sort of saying that, that people come out with. But mine was like five weeks in neonatal intensive care. And so I, I really felt like it rocked my world. And I lost my confidence. I lost my confidence in my career. I thought I've just been and, um, you know, at home with these two babies, I can never go back and work in my former career. No one would take me seriously. I can't take myself seriously. And I started going to a women's um, uh, fitness, postnatal fitness class. And I got to know the lady who um, was uh, the trainer. And um, we just got chatting. And I said, I always loved working out, always loved exercise. And she convinced me to go through the training program to become a fitness instructor and to specialize in pre and postnatal fitness. And it just was, it was just the best thing. And it came at the best time because it really helped me regain a sense of myself, um, give me some more self-confidence. Um, and then slowly as the, my babies got older, I could then go and, and work flexibly organize fitness sessions when um, my husband was around to be with the children it wasn't so fixed in a kind of nine to five job and um yeah I, I had, it was the best thing I ever did I eventually moved back to the UK and then I found my way back to my career in immunology but um I've remained passionate about fitness ever since and now you know as a person in my 40s I think less about fitness and more about just moving my body moving as much as I can in lots of different ways um and you know my job is often really sedentary I'm stuck at the desk sometimes writing a book I spent a lot of time sitting and so I know how hard it is when you have a job like that to find opportunities to move your body so you know starting to see things like doing the laundry, tidying the kids' toys, cooking, cleaning, going to the school run, going grocery shopping as all part of your daily movement. And then before you know it, you realize, actually, I've been pretty active today. I'm not going to make it to the gym because I can't because of work and kids and whatnot. But that doesn't matter. Like fitness doesn't need to be constrained to a gym class per se. Um, and I've been talking a lot about this on social media recently, and I was really really uh, blown away by how many people reached out to me and said that this had helped them you know this rethinking about fitness not just as being this contrived thing we do in the gym but just as humans we're not built to work out we're just built to move and move in lots of different ways and move um, often throughout the day um, and I often think we can end up thinking that we must go to the gym to do some class to offset all the sitting that we've done or the food that we've eaten and I think we just need to really move away from that and it's unlikely that our jobs are going to suddenly change if we're stuck at a desk but we can find ways to sort of build movement into our day and see it as an enjoyable thing. Uh I'm so glad you said that because that is something that always sits on my mind. I get very, I get this panic attack when I don't go to the gym. I haven't been for quite a while, but every time I say I'm doing it tomorrow, I'm doing it tomorrow. But I, I and I look at my steps. I've done a number of steps, but I'm still yeah. feeling that guilt in myself that because I haven't visited the gym, gym. So it's just changing up your mindset to say yeah. you are doing enough. You are doing. You've done this many steps. Because every time I, I try and park a little bit further from where I need to get to, yeah. you know, I try to do a little bit of there and move around. But that's my, that guilt still stays in my head where I feel yeah. myself, oh, but I haven't been to the gym. So I obviously I'm, I'm a failure in that aspect. Yeah. I done it. So I'm so glad that you have said something about this because I believe if I was feeling this, there must be so many women out mm -hmm. there and men who've listened to so many people on social media who say, get up at this time, do this at this time. But sometimes your body just wants to say, you know what, I can't, I need to rest. Yeah, exactly. So in, you know, in saying that, can you just really re emphasize that point again? 
because I think this is so important for women to understand that yes. you are not alone in this. They're just different aspects of fitness. So in your, in your world, how do you just do it that you feel comfortable to change that mindset that even if I don't go to the gym, I'm okay? How, do you, how, did, you, how did you change, navigate that mindset? Well, I think it was a couple of things. So having kids meant I couldn't go to the gym when I wanted. And then when I went back to work as an immunologist, it was even more challenging because when I wasn't at work, I was rushing home to desperately be with my children if they'd been in daycare. Uh, and so then I realized that instead of waiting until the end of the week when I might have a chance of getting that one hour workout class at the gym, I just need to be doing stuff through the week. Um, so that was kind of slightly liberating. And then a few years ago, I was, I was hit by a car, strangely enough, <laughs> and I broke my shoulder um, and uh, I, I couldn't move my arm at all. My arm was immobilized for three months. And then we went into lockdown. So all the physio that I had planned that completely stopped all the gyms were closed and that was to me really like okay we need to not just um be reliant on gyms for fitness we need to be able to do it in our own homes as well and so I would get up in the morning and I would do my physio exercises to get my arm moving again because when it came out of the the cast it was I was not able to raise it up properly or use my arm it was completely stiff and locked and all the muscle had disappeared so if I had just left it and I hadn't done anything at home to rehabilitate my arm you know because everything was closed and COVID had happened I would never have regained the function of my arm it was kind of almost like it's up to me to do this and then I kind of got into this idea of this you know drip feeding movement throughout my day and I, I feel like it, I'm fitter and healthier than I've ever been just by doing that and going to the gym less because I think it's the, the consistency and small amounts of consistency across the week are so much more important than one really heavy workout session. Um, I would go to uh, my next question is that you know, there's a lot of misleading information, which is something we talked about very um, earlier on, information out there about the immune boosting claims um, being communicated to youngsters, even parents, even normal people, everyone, where there's so much mis misleading information. What can people do to be able to understand what they're reading, separate the uh, fake news from facts? How, yeah. how were we able to separate the two? Because oh. we still need real information coming to us. We still need people like yourself to, who have gone through all that qualification, who's tested the water to be out there giving us real information. But how can we separate the two? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's, it's not easy in today's landscape, particularly online. I think um, anybody who's oversimplifying something then I would cast a critical eye because health is very complex. And as we've discussed, there's a lot of different inputs that go into shaping how healthy we are. It's not just the food or the supplements, it's, it's the whole picture. So if anyone's trying to oversimplify it and say, you just need to eat this, this and this, take this supplement and you're gonna be invincible, then I would be like, that's a red flag that you know they're, they're oversimplifying it. Um, I think it's also important to remember that most um, companies that are trying to make a profit are, are trying to sell you something, but they're perhaps not selling it in a way that reminds you that you need to have the basics in place. So yes, supplement X might be really good for you, but only if you're also hitting the other um, basics of good food, good sleep, you know, enough rest, managing your stress, getting some exercise, you know, so if you don't have those in place, a supplement probably isn't going to give you a backdoor to health. Mm -hmm. So I think I'd just always make sure that you have that in your mind when you're consuming any information that seems a bit too simplistic or that's sort of overselling uh, a product and its health benefits. We have to get to your book now. In the spring of 2020, you released a book. And um, I can't imagine you released it in the spring of 2020. That was in the height of pandemic as well. <laughs> <laughs> so your, book, um, your debut book titled Immunity, 
the signs of staying well. What are the important messages you want people who read this book to learn from? And you know, why did you write it? Yeah, so the first book, yeah, came out, it was written before we even knew what COVID was, but the publication date was March 2020 when the first lockdown happened. Um, the, I guess I really wanted uh, to inspire people about the immune system and to convey it in a really um, exciting and beautiful way. I wanted people to think, wow, this system is fascinating and amazing, but really complex. Um, and I also wanted to elevate the importance of things other than diet. So I included a chapter on diet, but I put that last because I wanted to talk about mental well-being, stress, um, the role of exercise and sleep and how those were so important to the overall functioning of our immune system too. So I kind of wanted to get that out there first. And, and it's, it's more kind of um, more a deep dive into the science, but in a really accessible way. So it's meant for people with no scientific background at all. Uh, and it was kind of, um, yeah, just I, I, I really like a big, I really like the first book. This, the, I don't know, I guess it was such a, uh, you know, like a passion project that took me a while to, to get the ideas together, to get the book deal. It was a real kind of labor of love to get it out into the world. So, and then as soon as that hit, um, uh, publication they asked me for a second one so then I was like right <laughs> what am I going to think about to write <laughs> because I've put all my ideas into the first one so this one um the one that was released in the spring of 2020 is this the second one then no the, so the science of staying well this one this was released yeah. um the spring of 2020 and then in February this year the blueprint for strong immunity <laughs> came out which is much more of a kind of practical guide so it's it's really how to apply it to your day-to-day -day life so there's a little quiz on how to think about if your immune system is working well there's a little guide on how to build those small daily habits that can uh -huh. help you introduce some of these um uh, ideas that we can do to to help ourselves stay well so it's a little bit more practical so the third and um, second one is the blueprint and that one is currently out in stores. Anyone who's looking to get a copy could go and get a copy for both mm -hmm. of them actually. So the first one is the immunity, the science, what it's all about to stay well, how to um, overcome, um, deal with stress, sleep better, eat, eat better, that the diet thing you left out to the, was the last chapter because there was all, all this other comprehensive thing which you tend to miss. <laughs> exactly and the second one is all about the blueprints of staying well as well yeah a step guide by step by step guide yeah does that give a food in um does that give you guide on what to eat as well and does that does it does that include is that included of what you yeah it's got a real breakdown of all the different nutrients and then sort of how to build your plate how to keep a food diary if you're concerned that certain foods might not be working well for your health um and how to sort of build little habits to help you eat better sleep better move better um so there's a lot of stuff about the sort of psychology of well-being so um you know how to translate that knowledge into action and i also included a chapter on some chronic conditions so where we look at infection how to recover well from infection we look at allergies um, and then we look at autoimmune diseases so these are kind of immune mediated conditions and it's all about how to thrive with a chronic disease I speak to a lot of people who you know have been given a diagnosis of a lifelong condition and it's you know, it can leave people feeling very confused, very scared. And I kind of wanted to provide a lot of reassurance that some of these conditions are maybe not curable. Um, there may not be a sim single treatment that might be getting the right healthcare team in place. It might be trying different medications to find the dose that's working well for you. And then these are the lifestyle and diet things that can support you. And then, you know, how to really feel good despite what's going on with your body that's beyond your control um and that, that's where i think i just really wanted to bring that compassion piece and and help people kind of you know acceptance is a big part i think of thriving with a chronic condition because it's something that people can't change they haven't chosen but it can really open up 
to being able to live well once you sort of deal with that initial uh, shock and, and start to uh, learn to live with a condition. That's really true. That's really fascinating. I'm sure you you know a lot. I about know it. all of that. I know <laughs> all of that because of my own chronic pain and, and my own yes. illness. And I love what you said. That um, it's all about acceptance. I had to accept mine and the know. Yeah. But the only thing I struggle with was also the drugs and how do you yeah. you know you're taking so much drug to eliminate the pain, but all of a yeah. sudden you have this. Uh, your immune system is all of it's just some yeah. total mess. So when the what you eat to better it so I think it's all on myself and other people with chronic illness we'll definitely be finding your book very helpful so we'll be um I'll be definitely looking out for it and you said we could get it in all stores right now and online on Amazon as well yeah. Both of them. yeah 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 exactly okay so our final question before I let you go Dr Jenna um you know I really enjoy talking to you it's just um I understand you love to cook <laughs> it's one of the things you say you you know I think because you your, your humble beginnings you you, know, you grew up on a, on, a, on a farm where your mom also um, loved to cook she loves to cook organic food she rather you know everything you ate was really home, homemade food and you've taken on that then um, love of cooking from your mother and it's part you pass it on to your your twin your beautiful twin in terms of you love to make their food rather than just buy yourself already made you make it what are typical meals you serve your family during the week? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, I do quite like to make a really hearty soup because I think you can make big batches, you can store it in the freezer, um, and particularly for kids, you can shove a lot of vegetables in there and blend it up if they, if they don't like the chunky texture. Um, and I love to put loads of toppings on soup, so sprinkling different things, load it up so it's a really hearty meal. I'm a big fan of the slow cooker. So years of my mum telling me to buy one, I was like, no, I don't think I need one of those. But then I got one. They're really cheap to buy, actually. But you can literally throw things in, set it for you know eight hours so put it on in the morning and then you come home a really delicious stew or a curry or any dish that's you know with a sauce it will slow cook it over a long period of time and as a working mum I found that to be a great one so you can make like chili con carne or a particular curry and again throw in whatever you've got and it just all goes very delicious so we would have that quite often uh, we love rice, roast potatoes. Uh, we love cooking outdoors when the weather is good. So we have an outdoor oven. So it's, yeah, just throwing in some roasted peppers, some prawns, a uh, bit of salads. Um, yeah, really simple things. Adding some, some fresh or dried herbs to bring that flavor in. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Jennifer. You know, it's a lovely conversation because I, you know, I learned so much. Every day I have this wonderful conversation, especially people like yourself. I learned more about my own immunity, what I need to do to keep boosting it up. And it's just not about diet. Because yeah. that's the key word here I take from you. It's just not just about yeah. the diet. Exactly. Let's not forget that there is a comprehensive care for yeah. our immunity and if we keep remembering it there's the exercise there's thinking about your stress level there's thinking about loving yourself in terms of even if you're working out a little that's okay yeah I really appreciate exactly. this conversation I, 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 know, I can't thank you enough thank you so much for having oh, me oh thank you so much for having me it's been a real pleasure to come on and share with your audience on your amazing platform thank you yeah I appreciate this thank you very much